iBeats is a great invention, but do you really need to have it in your camera? Today I'll be comparing footage with and without iBeats and talk you through the benefits and the downsides of having iBeats. But first let's look at what iBeats actually is. iBeats stands for in-body image stabilization. Traditionally you'd have image stabilization built into the lens and not the camera, but with iBeats it's actually built into the camera body. Basically the way it works is when you move or shake your camera, the iBeats in your camera will counteract those movements, essentially keeping the sensor of your camera steady, so in short iBeats stabilizes your photos and videos mechanically in camera. Camera. The best thing about iBeats is the fact that all of your lenses kind of become stabilized lenses. As it's built into the camera, you don't need to worry about having a stabilized lens because your camera will get the job done. And if you do have a stabilized lens, you can actually combine the lens IS and the iBeats of your camera to get even more stabilization and even steadier footage. Do keep in mind that the strength of your iBeats will actually depend on the camera that you're using because for example Sony has a lot more subtle stabilization than for example Canon. These days a lot of cameras and even smartphones have iBeats but for example the new Canon EOS R8 doesn't have it and most cinema style professional video cameras don't have IBIS so do you actually need to have it or not? All of the samples I'm about to show you were shot both on the Canon EOS R8 that does not have IBIS and the Canon EOS R6 that does have IBIS and both also have lens stabilization in the footage and they're shot in 50 frames per second and slowed down to 50% because that is how I would shoot all of my b-roll anyways. Starting off with footage that has no camera motion in them you can really see that the shots with IBIS are a lot steadier. I think the footage looks fine even without IBIS but there is a clear difference and do keep in mind that I am using a stabilized lens here so without the lens IS the difference would be even bigger. Now if we add some subtle camera motion to our shots we will get the exact same results. As expected the footage with IBIS is a lot steadier than the footage without IBIS but once again I don't think the shots without IBIS look too bad either. But if we actually start to walk with our camera, the difference becomes a lot more visible. The shots with IBIS are a lot steadier and this is a type of a shot that I would never even want to try to get without IBIS. But then again, this type of a shot is where the issues with IBIS also start to show. Even though IBIS is a great tool for getting steadier footage, you might run into some issues especially with wide angle lenses in the corners of your footage because the corners actually start to wobble while using IBIS. Some cameras handle wobbling a lot better than others but if you're going to vlog with a a camera that has IBIS and you're using a wide angle lens, you might really run into some issues in the corners of your footage depending on how strong the IBIS is. So with a stronger IBIS you're going to have a lot more wobbling. Now the second issue is that there is also a little bit of a motion delay while using IBIS. As the sensor is counteracting your motions, it'll take a little bit of time before the actual footage will start to move with your camera. It is a very small amount of time, but if you're following something that is moving around very quickly, it might actually be a lot harder with IBIS than without IBIS. Also sometimes if you have a too strong IBIS your footage actually might start to look too smooth to a point where it's not really organic anymore. If you want to get more of an organic type of handheld motion you might not be able to get that with IBIS because the footage might just become too smooth. For example with documentary style filmmaking if you want to have a bit of roughness in your footage using a camera with IBIS might actually make that impossible and there is a clear reason why professional style video cameras do not have IBIS. So with all of this being said if you want the smoothest possible handheld footage out there or you don't want to worry about buying stabilized lenses, IBIS is going to be fantastic for you. There are also scenarios where you might not want to have IBIS but I would say in most cases IBIS is going to be worth it for you. But this all depends on the style of content that you want to create and the way you shoot. For me for example I don't think the lack of IBIS is a deal breaker even though it is a great tool but I don't mind having a camera that does not have IBIS. You're going to be able to get some amazing footage without IBIS too especially if you have stabilized lenses. And actually if you do want to have the smoothest possible footage ever out there you're not going to want to shoot handheld anyways you're gonna to want to have a tripod or a slider or a gimbal or something else to stabilize your whole setup but that is all I have for today thank you for watching and I hope I will see you in the next one Shoo.